Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to Focus Hive. Well, we have been talking about collecting feedbacks, processing feedbacks. Now it's time to kind of look at how do we really respond to a feedback or a complaint, right? Responding to feedback is by far the most important step, right? I mean, people at times give you unsolicited feedback, good, bad, ugly, whatever it can be, and they will give you. And it's equally important to respond to good, bad, and ugly feedbacks. All feedbacks have to be responded to, and they really need to be responded in a very sincere way. Uh, I have seen people putting effort in responding to feedbacks when, when it's a negative feedback, right? People try to showcase that, okay, I am sincere, I am sorry, I apologize, and I will make sure this will not happen again. But I have seen people struggle when they receive good feedback. It's equally important that you acknowledge that as well. So let's talk about both these aspects today in this video and see how we can effectively respond to feedbacks. All right, well, well responding to feedback, the first and most important thing is to listen to the person who's giving you the feedback. You have to have sincerity in listening and trying to understand the feedback. We spoke about this in the previous session where we were talking about active listening, right? Listen twice, speak once. Uh, that, is, that is critical for you to keep your mouth shut and listen to what the other person is saying or read what they have sent to you and when it is an email or a document i would prefer reading it twice or thrice before i respond to someone because there are a lot of nuances we tend to miss if we are just reading it once so listen read understand digest and only then respond to the person now in between understanding listening reading and responding there's one step that is important if it is good, you thank the person. And if it is a bad feedback, then you apologize to the person or to the organization. But whoever is giving you feedback, right? That's important to, to kind of respond to the emotion as well. We tend to forget that whenever we are receiving feedback, there are two things that are involved. One is emotion and the other is the actual problem, right? So you have to respond to both these aspects. You have to respond to their emotions, and then you have to basically fix the problem or assure them that you will fix the problem. So both of these are equally important for you to understand and then acknowledge. So that's why whether you thank them or apologize, given the scenario, you have to do that. And then you move on towards really responding to the situation as to why that happened. What are the areas that you have identified because of which this problem has happened? Or, and let's let's take a pause, right? Let's look at the good ones. Somebody comes and says, hey, great show. Your presentations were amazing or your answers were too good. Or let's say you're, you, you went and and represented your team or your company or your school or your college, whatever, right? You did something great and somebody and people are coming and congratulating you. Give them their time. Shake hand, talk to them. How did you really uh, achieve this? Those small nuggets, those important aspects that you took care of uh, while you were training for the presentation or the game, talk about that. Let people know, give them a little glimpse of the, your hard work. So they will really be happy that you have acknowledged their positive congratulations. Now moving to the real part of the feedback, right? People generally give feedbacks when, when there is a problem or, or when complaint when there is a problem, right? So you will have to really find out the gaps and I'll tell you a tiny little story. Uh, back in the day, when back in the day, there were times when I would get complaints from customers, and we would just uh, balantly say, "I apologize," 
uh, I apologize for the situation, so and so, and I will uh, get back to you, or here is what we need to do, right? Then one of the customer really taught me uh, <laughs> this, really taught me, because he specifically asked me as to what will you solve? What were the gaps that you identified? And how are you going to solve them? And that's when I realized that when we say, I apologize and send out a basic template, templatized email to our customers, uh, it doesn't really add any value. And, and with my personal experience of working in customer support for over 20 years now, I have realized that the word apology makes no sense. Never use that word. I don't use that word. I use sorry instead of apology. And sorry seems more honest. And believe me, you will not write I am sorry unless you are sorry. You will be able to write apologize because somehow it doesn't have any sentiment to it. I don't know. It just doesn't have any sentiment to it. And people just flash it around. But when you when it comes to saying I am sorry, I myself have seen it and I've seen others as well, that it really, really has that emotion. And when it goes across to the other person, they also feel it that the person is genuine and they are genuinely sorry about the situation. And that takes... And that is like half the battle won. Uh, you will be then able to talk to the customer and maneuver the discussion towards the actual problem and solution. So the other important, uh, the other thing is that people tend to just flash their titles and get on a call. Okay, I'm a vice president. Okay, I'm a director. Okay, I'm a manager. Okay, I am whatever. CXO and I get on a call the customer would be like so happy that Mr. Superman is on call and they will not blast us not true the customer is looking for a genuine understanding of their problem and then they're looking for someone who really has the answers for it or at least trying to find the answers for it I would I would recommend that you don't go on a call unless you have figured out the cause of the problem. That's the big piece. A lot of times people just get on a call and apologize, 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 and then say, I will get back to you. And that is where you lose all the credibility. When you're saying, I am sorry, you should also have a proper answer for the problem. If you don't have, take more time. Ask for more time from your customer then schedule the meeting when you have the answer. That does not mean that problem happened today and you find out the answer next year and you go to the customer. By then, the customer will not be your customer. They'll be your competitor's customer. So there has to be a sense of urgency to find the answer. But find the answer, then get on a call with the customer and explain them why it happened and what are those top one or two areas that you feel you will be able to solve so that the problem does not happen again. That is where the preventive measure becomes critical. Uh, there are so many calls that have been part of wherein we, we go in with a view that we will explain the problem, we'll explain the solution, but we have also got surprised by the customer saying that, how are you going to prevent it? So that made me realize that preventive measure is far more important than the problem and the solution because that has happened, it's the past. They're more focused on the future. So unless you kind of really nail it down, the customer or the person giving you a complaint is not going to be satisfied. So in my view, if I have to summarize the whole thing, listen to the problem acknowledge the emotion, have a clear understanding of the problem and the gaps, share the solution that will actually solve the problem and share, the next level is share the preventive measure which will not allow this problem to happen again. 
and that is a holistic view or an approach to responding to a complaint click on the like button subscribe to the channel and probably share it with your friends and colleagues i'll see you in the next video till then bye